Welcome to episode seven, everyone. Uh, it's going to be a great one, so don't go anywhere. Uh, we're going to introduce a new segment where we try to see if Tristan can guess movie segments, and we're going to talk about scripts, why they're important, should you use them, and the reason why Tristan hates them. I don't like them. <laughs> Welcome to TriFlix Cast. We are professional videographers <laughs> and photographers talking about the latest techniques, business practices, and tech with a bit of fun sprinkled in. My name is Cole. I'm the producer around these parts. To my right is... I'm, I'm Tristan. I'm doing good. Caught my breath. Welcome, buddy. Yeah. Hey. Are you... Are you... Rested? Are you rested, sir? I'm... I've, I've, Somewhat? I'm... I took a nap with my eyes open. Okay. We'll, we'll circle back. We'll circle back. To my left is... A, a man who took a, ma- a nap with his eyes closed. Boom. Does that <laughs> <Not> man, David. <laughs> so does that man have a name? Yeah. <laughs> We're, we got no rails today. No rails. Uh, the three of us, again, somehow we run a company called Triflix. We are a digital media company based out of Columbus, Indiana. I'm going to need a little more energy from you today, David. I'm gonna <laughs> need little, Both of you. I'm going to need a little more. I was uh, reading. I was to, reading give, okay. to give more context, though. I wake up this morning at 7 a.m. and I have two notifications from this man. Me, the man. Tristan, to my right, this guy. And they both say two hours ago. Oh. <laughs> and he's like, video's done, send it to the client. If you have any questions, don't ask unless somebody's dying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't call. You can send me a message, just don't call me. I had to double take. I was like, two hours ago. Yeah. But yeah i'm saying this to say this that's our dedication yeah mm-hmm. like tristan was in the office i checked the cameras at 11 p.m yeah. and he was here with his pregnant wife dude she's such a trooper i was yeah. like hey do you want to come with me to the office i got some work to do she's like will it help you get done quicker i was like yeah probably <laughs> <laughs> it's her secret <laughs> and she, she every once in a while she'll look up and see that like a website up on my desktop because i have two (laughs) monitors she's like are you getting work done i'm like yeah actually it's rendering i feel like she should be in the office more she should be are you working yeah no like that's a huge value to the company (laughs) (laughs) do you want to know something funny though is i so i pull up the cam and i see sophie she grabs my chair and flips it around and she sits in it and she's looking everywhere underneath the chair and i was like she's about to change my chair settings <laughs> <laughs> this is tristan's wife and, and i was and i have a thing and so i'm like sitting mm-hmm. there watching this transpire and tristan is deadlocked in his project mm-hmm. and she's just like getting comfy and she lowers the chair all the way down and then wraps up in her little blanket <laughs> <laughs> and pushed my keyboard and mouse to the back of the desk yeah uh, I think she moved your coffee cup too. And it just, yes, yeah, she did. And uh, I cringed a little bit, but I was like, she's pregnant. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give her a, I'm going to give her a pass on this one. Dude, you should have like jumped because we like the, the security cameras have like two way communication. Just like, yeah, hey, get, 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 get out of my chair. What are you doing? That's my chair. You can't be in my chair. Get your own chair. We're a family oriented organization. So. Yeah. That's why. We, <laughs> That's why people work late nights. Audrey was like, are you okay? Family. I was like, yes, go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> you look perturbed, it's, but it's not with you. Don't worry. It's like, I'm okay. I'm okay. <laughs> but uh, so we have yeah. a new story today. I just want to reiterate how much I love Colorado. <laughs> <laughs> we do have a new story today. And uh, okay. my prompt is uh, toad licking. Don't, toad licking. I yeah. Don't like where it's going already. Yeah, dude, Obviously, <laughs> you get warts on your tongue. You got a what? frog in your throat? You get warts on your tongue if you if you to- lick a toad. Yeah, it's like cow flipping, but it's toad licking. How do you know that? I grew up in Jenks County. No follow up questions toads. that answers them. That's it. We're good to go. So I have a couple websites I pull some weird news from, and this one popped up first, and I was like, ah, we gotta we gotta throw this one out there. Oh. Uh, the National Park Service wants humans to stop licking this toad. <laughs> can't stop me does the uh does the skin on it like get you high or it's, something yes oh oh look at that <laughs> yes so it is called the <laughs> Humans. uh sonoran sonoran desert toad we're not going to properly pronounce it for the protection of this toad i was going to say yeah where are these located so how do i find one yeah what what parks what i love it no national like (laughs) stop it um 
it literally says in the first thing is, it, is you know, go into almost any park and there's often reminders to refrain from going near petting or feeding the wildlife, mm-hmm. but not licking them. <laughs> but now they're going to add that to the list because uh, they were licking this frog and they said that it has hallucinogenic properties and that's why people are people are doing it they're licking this frog dude kid like this is why we can't have cough Toads, syrup right? or like what is it wd-40 what's the aerosol can that we can't have anymore spray air i don't know every everything good about the world including toads is being removed because people can't stop getting high <laughs> this is why we need to legalize some stuff in, in this indiana man people are resorting to toads yeah and there's risk like it's it's poisonous to a certain degree and so it's like no but some people discovered that the toads <laughs> toxic secretions contain a powerful hallucinogenic dude so people are going to national parks licking They're this just trying toad. To keep us from it's, it. it's a gateway for it's a gateway animal it's gateway, it's frog. <laughs> gateway looking yeah, it starts off with the redacted toad and then dude. and then before you know it you're taking well, scorpion injections dude. what was that uh <laughs> it says tiktok in, trend a while ago uh sick licks or something like that oh yeah yeah, yeah. the sickest of licks yeah. oh, that's disgusting it says in the recent years smoking the amphibian secretion has grown in popularity so much so that the species is even considered threatened at least in new mexico due to collectors that want to use the animal for drug use why don't we just start a farm like every other animal but they're not farm animals I mean, right you can farm a salmon you can farm a frog toad <laughs> farm a- <laughs> I got nip- I got nipples. Can you milk me? No. <laughs> oh, they did that with almonds. <laughs> that's that's how you milk an almond, right? Yeah. yeah. They they always talk about rat milk in studies. So I mean, surely, surely if we can if we can do something on that level. Man, I hate this. <laughs> really? Does it bother you? No, the last thirty seconds. The last thirty yeah. seconds. You have you seen Meet the Parents, right? Meet the Parents. Yeah, Meet the Parents. It's a Ben Stiller movie. Mm, i don't know robert de niro says that line because he because he goes on <laughs> really? it's he's like a he's he's a potential son-in-law ben stiller is to robert de niro yeah and so he's meeting you know the mm. the woman he wants to marry he's I meeting his, his father and and so like he mm. goes through this whole thing and like lies about the fact that he used to live on a farm in detroit <laughs> and he would they would milk cats Oh. And so Robert Nino comes back and he's like, I got nipples, Greg. Can you milk me? Because he's like, you can milk anything <laughs> as long as it has nipples. <laughs> it's like a whole skit in the movie. Oh. Yeah. Have you not seen that movie? Dude, the movie no, that movie no. is, is it, it's some people can't stand it because it is literally like cringe from the beginning to the end. How does it yeah. feel to be left out of like a, a movie topic right now? Like somebody's, so, <laughs> yes. we're really bonding oh over this gosh. movie. Uh, I mean, do you feel left I out? I feel prepared to watch it. <laughs> there's prepared, three of them prepared to avoid oh. them i think you know i might have seen it was a long time ago though oh wait, that's an old movie uh is there like a, a yoga scene for like when really old the people come out? is that the same movie it's the second one. Oh, that's the second but, one yeah but, but the original one came okay. out in 2000 okay that would have been three. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ew <laughs> I was four. I was eight. <laughs> you should not have watched that movie. <laughs> I, 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 at least I was a little bit older. A little bit. Well, uh, on on the on, on the, that note, on the note of milk, um, <laughs> what else do you put oh. milk in? <laughs> coffee. Oh, <laughs> coffee has five <laughs> with yeah. locations in Franklin. <laughs> I got you guys. Give, 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 give me, give me that script. You guys. Get, get. <laughs> coffee House Five is Johnson County's premier independent coffee shop to relax, study, meet friends, laugh around a great coffee and great food Monday through Saturday. Whether it's handcrafted espresso or a single origin pour over you'll enjoy Mm. the freshest smoothest coffee possible roasted in-house at their franklin location using a unique airbed roasting process and don't forget Mm. to pair your coffee with a ham and cheddar scone biscuits and gravy made with their award-winning parmesan chive biscuits or any of their other pastries and sandwiches prepared in their franklin kitchen using family recipes in a style they call midwest comfort comfort food almost don't mess it up man 
Am I going all the way? You were yes, doing a great I job. Am. As if that's not enough to get your attention, Coffee House 5 is a for benefit coffee house. All profits are invested in building a stronger community through their support of local mental mm. health services, which you can read more about on their website, Coffee House 5, F I V E, in case you mm. don't know, dot com. So the next time you're in Franklin, Greenwood, or Bargersville, stop by at Coffee House 5. I, I want to emphasize how much we need the community is important. <laughs> Getting coffee, <laughs> mental health, laughing, having a good time. Yeah. I heard through the grapevine there's a possibility that like Bargersville will be open somewhere in the first couple weeks of December. Ooh, so I like that. It's coming up soon. Yeah. Which, in, in addition to that, I just I have to I have to say this. You, are, I didn't know that you were one of these people, but you're one of the espresso people. Is this an expression? Expression. <laughs> uh, so, so there, there's a there's a type of people that pronounce the word espresso, and then there's the type that pronounce it es- as it's spelled espresso. espresso. Yeah. And so I just caught it as you were you were like espresso, yeah. and I was like, oh, X. he's one of them. It's hey, like man. ask versus ask you a question. Yes, hey, I ask you a question. Yeah, yeah, it's like right? the same thing. I'm gonna, what can I do for you? I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> what can I do for you, bud? I'm this a is a you. <laughs> I actually heard in France they actually pronounce it in some regions in of France. Google. That's a, my, that's my guess. They actually wow. pronounce it espresso because that's how it's spelled. Right? Ah. I think. Vivi? That's what I heard. So you're kind of French. Ah. You're kind of French. Only where it matters. <laughs> Only where it matters. <laughs> Expresso. Okie dokie. Um, this has been awesome. I'm so, I'm so pumped on this episode already, you guys. Do you have any I'm topics to talk about? <laughs> yeah, today we're going to talk about scripts. Oh, and how gosh. much we love them. Well, yeah, we, we had a, a spirited debate on our, at our Monday morning meeting about scripts. So I figured, what, what a better topic because it happens to it happens to go along with our industry. I like to come in and just drop a bomb every once in a while, just no. a just to get people out. riled up. I just want to have a conversation. You're like, I hate scripts. Scripts aren't needed. I said, tell me otherwise. I, and I, I believe I quote. Mm, hold on, I'll pull it. Scripts up. are silly. And I linked a video. He watched a YouTube video and thinks he's knowledgeable. <laughs> no. <laughs> the funny <laughs> thing is, the people that speak on it in the video aren't even directors. They're not even. Yeah. Well, technically one is now, but at the time of his interview, it uh, it uh, he was in the process. It was ah. like his first film. I took it as like um, how to look at standards for making videos. Like standards from like Hollywood's perspective and then from like somebody uploading to YouTube. Okay. And that's I feel like that's kind of what Joel Haver, part of the inspiration for this topic for you, comes from. Yeah, so we uh, we I, I'll, I'll I'll segue back into what we're actually talking about here. Uh, so I, on topic. I, no, that was on topic. Yeah, what are yeah, you talking about? Yeah, no, it's not That's that part of the video. The that context, you said. the context of what is this video, right? <laughs> so yes, Joel Haver is in the video, but it's an interview. Um, it, well, it's a breakdown of an interview uh, with uh, Bo Burnham, who is a. Yeah comedian and original a youtube creator he's been on the platform forever it's where he got to start and then he started doing stand-up comedy i think he has a netflix special he's released he's two. multiple albums he's very musically inclined he's like a white donald glover he's directed <laughs> films and tv shows and such he's a very talented guy and he believes that there is a um kind of like a counterculture developing um towards more authentic creation, more authentic art forms. And whether that's in photo, video, you know, uh, just anything being created online by people, he thinks that the st- the stuff that's starting to stand out more is the things that are less polished, the things that are more authentic in the moment. Um, and that's kind of where he got his start was like just playing a piano and singing silly songs that, yeah, he did write lyrics for but it wasn't overly done it wasn't overly polished it wasn't 40 marvel movies in one franchise that all have (laughs) to be super connected and like everything is like very like under a microscope on how it's produced and then he references um in this uh interview breakdown the uh the creator of this uh, references joel haver as the answer to what bo burnham was suggesting a more natural a more Mm -hmm. uh improvised style of art 
essentially. And Joel Haver specializes in video creation. And that's yeah. that was the video that was shared. Yeah. And then you said scripts are silly. And I you said scripts correct. are silly. I did double yes. double take on that. <laughs> yes. Which I the debate that I had, and I was talking Daniel and I were talking about this as well, is I feel like there's a fine line, you know, because it's like you could say a lot of things are unscripted. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But like ninety nine percent of it is. At some point in time, like if you're making videos on a regular basis, most likely there is a thought process to some degree on what you're doing. Right. And it's, I don't think the, the, I, you throw out the idea that scripts are silly. It gets people talking. You, you sure. say that. Got me around that. I, exactly. Cause we had just <laughs> talked, right. I mean, I don't know, an episode ago, we were literally just talking about like Daniel was wishing that we did more scripting and we all kind of agreed on that. Mm-hmm. And part of our process this year has also been, I mean, the Tip Tuesday is a great example of this, that each episode is actually thought out, laid out in kind of a bullet point, sub bullet point um, format. And that helps us to be able to understand like what shots we need and the things that need to be said. But most of the time, right, it's like it's a guiding point. It's not really scripted. It's just like outlined. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, because we're, we're still kind of, we don't have a teleprompter or somebody feeding in our ears like. Yeah. We have no way of seeing the things that we're doing. We're normally kind of off the cuff, but we're using an outline to some degree. Yeah. I mean, is that scripted or not? No, I don't think that is. I think that's like a very loose idea and I'm not opposed to that. I yeah. think, I think scripts do have a, a, there's a time and a place for them, but um, like we have like a podcast, like there's a reason in my mind that podcasts have like blown up in just viewership numbers. And there's a reason Joe Rogan got a million, a hundred million dollar plus deal. Now it's like, it's very loose. Like there's not a script. Yes. You have some bullet points of things we might talk about, but like, there's no, there's no message. Like at the, at the end of the day, there's no, like, what is our goal out of this podcast? Like we're not trying to convince people of anything specific per episode. It's like, we have a general mission for the company it's like we want to entertain educate and inspire people this is a medium to do it but we're not like all right today we're going to be talking let's like npr it's like all right today we're talking about this this and this and these are the reasons we're talking about it's around the horn i guess is a like for espn style it's like yeah people come in like with a debate mindset and it's like this all right i'm going to talk about this and it's very direct and i know all the i know all the information on it and i'm going to Mm. like just cram it down to viewers you know and it's like, I, David started talking about Joel Haver. It's like, Joel Haver is a, he does scripts. Like he does have an idea, but it's very, very loose. And you can see it in his art style of like how improvised it is. Yeah. I mean, I, I still think that that would be, that would still fall under the category of scripted. Uh, I mean, there's like right? you said, no teleprompters and stuff, but um, like, I think, I think if you show up, if you show words. Yeah. But right? it's like, he's not, he's not planning a location like in his style like it, like he talks about whether it's rainy or sunny i'm not going to wait a day because of how the weather is or whether or not a venue's closed that i would thought would have been cool to shoot at i'm still going to go out and make something today and i'm not going to wait until the conditions are right to produce it and i feel like like traditionally like directing and producing both of our roles is like all right it has to be like perfect or we will we want it to be as close to like the original vision we had as possible. Right. And I feel like the way we currently produce like 48 hour films is definitely more on that looser side. Like we have a general script. I think it would be fun to do less scripted. So what's, why, why don't you like scripting? Let's, Let's go to that. I like, I like original, like the YouTube, I sent you a video. It was, the mm-hmm. video was called like uh, burning a stump with a leaf blower Two. That was mm-hmm. the name of the video. It was 30 seconds long. You click it. Yeah. It's a dude with a leaf blower burning a stump. And I was like, I watched the whole thing. I don't have a leaf blower. I don't have a stump. I don't have a need to watch this video. But there was mm-hmm. just something weirdly drawing about like this very natural video of like, I'm, I shot a thing that happened today and it was it happened and here it is. And taking that looseness of reality and, and how do I capture that and put it into art? And it's like, all right, well, uh, one of the, my favorite videos from Joel Haver is he's out in a desert and it's 
what it's like to dream basically like when you have like the dreams where like you're jumping in and out nothing makes sense he has an idea of what dreams are like it's somewhat scripted because it's like you have a dream and you're here and then all of a sudden you're transported there and somebody's like i want to talk to you about dinner and you go and you're like all right what do you want to do for dinner and then all of a sudden they turn into a, a wig on the ground and it's like that's super weird maybe he had a general idea but i don't think he like came up with a list of exactly shot for shot storyboard shot list and like over detailed it like we do that for clients because they want to know what we're going to produce ahead of time but right. i i think there's something really cool about just grabbing a camera and whenever david and andrew and i would make these like short little videos mm -hmm. we would take maybe five minutes to 10 15 minutes to think like what do we want to shoot and then we would just try to wing it we would wing the shots we would wing the dialogue and like that's the stuff that I really enjoyed making. And now mm -hmm. that's like, we have a cinema camera and better lighting. It's like, I want to bring that higher quality to that old YouTube genre of like, just real loose, just like, can we create something humorous in the moment without having to over plan it? I do like the tipped videos that you're doing, that mm -hmm. you're producing. Like I like how scripted most of that is, but then there's something really cool whenever you hand me a project and you're like, hey, can you do some VFX work? And I'm like, what do you want? And you're just like, I don't know, just add a mouse and make it cool. So do you just want to have more fun while making videos? Like what's, yeah. what are yeah. you trying to avoid? Yeah. I don't like, see what, what is the script de detracting from? Well, I, I feel like whenever you over polish it, that you get the difference between Conan O'Brien and Jimmy Kimmel. Like, I feel like there is a certain looseness whenever like, uh, I guess maybe that's not the best, but like whenever you have television shows, you can mm -hmm. tell who is an entertainer based on how well can they handle improvis like improvising. I think Conan O'Brien is an example where people are drawn to him. Like generally they're like, Oh, he's a funny guy. He's, he's very good at improvising no matter mm -hmm. the situation or what happens on set. Maybe, maybe his note cards are wrong with Bill Burr and he reads something wrong. And then he starts roasting his camera operator yeah. in the middle of a performance. It's like, that's funny. It's they're in the moment. He could have scripted away it. from like yeah. what the law of the script is. Like yeah. he, it's okay to not follow it. And he had a general idea going into it, but yeah. like he was, that was natural. And in the moment they don't cut that out. They don't remove it. And yeah. it's like, and then you get on like, uh, I don't know, just like general cable TV. It's like everything is so polished. Marvel does an amazing mm -hmm. job at it and it's cool to go to the cinema and watch it. But like, yeah, I can only sit through so many Marvel movies a year before I'm like, all right, I'm, this is, this is really well done, but I kind of want something a little more authentic, something. And, and then I go to a podcast. Yeah. Which I get that. I think. Mm, I think for me, I guess maybe I'm more hung up on the semantics of it all. Oh, yeah. That it's more of like, mm. these are differing levels of production mm -hmm. rather than a, a script versus unscripted discussion. Yeah, you know no, I mean? it's not, mm -hmm. I'm not like actually anti-scripts. I think scripts are fine. I just think there's a time and a place on how how loosely you use them. Like, but this, that's like, like bullet points versus like teleprompter. Yeah, I want it somewhere, yeah, yeah. somewhere. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, actually it's like bullet uh, teleprompter bullet points are like in the middle and then at the bottom is like all right gorilla let's go grab a camera and just like eric andre something real quick mm. well i think that's what always separated the good i mean i think that yeah the good directors and the great directors um especially the stuff that i've listened to it's the guys that are willing to go guys and girls that are willing to say hey you know yeah. you, you you if you want to go with something go with it like i think judd mm. apatow does a lot of like yeah. he lets his actors do a lot of Impro improvisations yeah. during filming which i think is is great but there's always a general concept a general idea a box yeah at which the main thing yeah. is put in right it's like there's still it goes to like the intent of like why you're there in the first place exactly some people exactly have like this whole vision like you were saying and they want it to be exactly how they want it in their mind and the script is the way that keeps it directly on track but right some yeah. people are like i want this to be funny or i want this to be whatever and like if you can do something to add to it do it right yeah, yeah. well it's trusting trusting the people you're working with too mm. right it's having the right team and having the right people and you know a lot of again back to my other example with like judd it's like mm -hmm. he uses a lot of the same people right these are people he has bonded with over time actor and actress wise and it's like yeah i know what your strengths and your weaknesses are let's play off of all those and like 
you know yeah. go do your thing this is what the scene's about but like here you go and i think that's what they what people like try to describe as like the magical like thing that happens when they like film a classic and they don't realize they're filming a classic yes. because everybody's in sync yeah everybody kind of knows what they want they what it should be and like it's not just like they wrote up the perfect masterpiece just everything fell into place because everybody knew yeah. what it was supposed to be well you see yeah. that with like trained professionals is like that's the difference so like um uh was it uh robert downey jr and um who's uh johnny depp like mm. yeah they're they're both produced by uh, by Disney and they're like overly produced, well budgeted movies. But the movies that usually people refer to as the ones they like are often the ones where those actors were given the reins to just eat berries in the middle of a set and improvise. And it's like, yeah. those are the fun moments like about Willy movies. Wonka. Yeah. Gene Willy Wilder. Wonka. Oh yeah. Like, I just like, I want to yep. be limping. I want the cane. I want to like be deceptive about this from the they're start. Like, He's why? like, he got into it. He was like 100%. Yep. He knew what was going on. That's what it takes. Maybe, a, yeah. maybe another more clear example that maybe it's maybe too niche for some people, but it's like the difference between Dan Harmon and Justin Roiland. Dan Harmon is a phenomenal writer. Like his mm. community, amazing. Um, his work uh, and Rick and Morty, it's really well done. Um, Channel 101, even before any of this is like really well, well written stuff. Mm -hmm. And then you have Justin Roiland, who is the bingiest of bongs, um, who's just <laughs> he's just all over the place. Like he wants to improvise everything. Yeah. And whenever you take those two people together, you make really great art. Um, and actually, the funny thing is, the Russo brothers originally were working with Dan Harmon on Community, mm -hmm. and then they go off to make Marvel with Feige. So it's like there's you see all these amazing people in the industry working together to make these pieces of art, but there's a reason why certain movies flop and mm -hmm. other movies don't. It's like, well, we had this director and he made this other movie and it was amazing. It's like, well, I had this actor and they're great role for this, um, or great actor for this role. And it's like, why doesn't the movie do well? And it's like, well, it doesn't resonate with people. And I think a lot of times it's either, it can fall into the category. It's just overproduced and or underproduced. Even it's like if you ever watch the original Rick and Morty that um, Justin Roiland made by himself, it's like Don't. it's a lot. <laughs> but I love it. Like my wife hates it. I love it. Uh. And then we both like Rick and Morty, which is developed later on by yeah. somebody who actually really leans into writing and will refuse to put out a season for years until it's perfect like in terms of writing in terms mm -hmm. of vision mm -hmm. and then you have justin roiland who's like putting out a new video game a new tv show a new like he's co-writing like three shows right now and code like and he just wings so much of it so it's like there's yeah. that two that dichotomy of should you improvise or should you write and then it's like shawshank redemption it's like mm -hmm. a really good movie that was super well written and yeah, it's and a their classic goal, their goals are like completely different yeah. between dan and justin yeah like yeah. He, he just really enjoys the silly random zaniness of things and dan Harmon wants to like compose it's like this symphony like how everything works together and he likes having those deep characters like yeah. he was talking about like even when he plays like dungeons and dragons like a game that's just about like rolling dice and fighting enemies. Like, no, he's like, I want to think about my character and he's going to have a backstory. His parents died and like that really affected him. And like, yeah. what's yeah. his motivation? And, like, halfway through the game, he has this like changing moment and like that reflects like one of the first decisions that he did back at the beginning. Like, who thinks about this stuff? You're supposed to be playing a video game. Like, what is going on? Why does it matter? Yeah. But, but he loves that stuff. Yeah. That, that is how his how he uh how he's creative and maybe that's a personality trait of being controlling or something or be being more loose or more open to I it i don't know yeah but it's like i don't know i just i i like it i don't mm -hmm. lean towards and you know me <laughs> I, and i don't lean especially in the creative realm like i lean mm -hmm. less towards the control of the, con the controlling like you know direct path this is what we're doing there's no deviation yeah um I tend to like to fly by the seat of my pants a little bit more because I do, I, I agree with you. I, I mean, I think the mm -hmm. natural things come out. I think you're somewhere in the middle. I think like, I don't think you're, I don't think you're too far well, gone yeah. one direction well, or the other, but I think 
I am just really far the op like not opposite of you, but I'm just very far in a different direction from center. Yeah. And that's where mm-hmm. I get that. That's the Dan Harmon and the Justin Roiland is like, I think we work well together because of that difference. It's like if we yeah. were both bing bonging, we would be making like uh what is that? There was a, there was an old TV show on. Oh, I, I reference this every once in a while. It's like angel, uh, Ar- 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 or whatever. It was a dude on, uh, adult swim with like a oh. snake for an arm or whatever like that show was like yeah. on drugs that was that was too <laughs> too many bing bongs in the kitchen probably doing way too many things uh, that's they were licking too many you. toads that's, true, that's what they were doing licking way too yeah. many toads making that so it's like <laughs> too many i don't psychedelic toads i don't yeah. want that but i also don't want like those movies where you hear about the director who's like super anal and you have to redo the shot eight times until it's flawless and it has to match exactly the storyboard and the vision of the director and it's like yeah I don't like that either, but that's... <laughs> yeah, I'm aware. But, but like, yeah. how many times have I asked you to reshoot something? <laughs> I, that doesn't look right. Once. You're like, I'm you sure asked me fine. once, and then I'm just like, you, you learn. You're like, I'm probably not going to ask them to reshoot anymore. But there was one shoot we did recently. Um, probably can't. I don't know. You can disclose it if you want. But uh, it was uh, shooting products and uh, software for a company. And you're like, hey, you didn't get a whole lot of coverage of this specific element of the production and like this was a really big deal to the client and i was like i got enough and i i was like you know what he's the producer if he doesn't you think did. we got enough i'm going to take a look and i went back and i watched the playbacks and i was like i only got like six shots i probably should get a couple more and i'm, I'm glad we did but that's hmm. that that's the back and forth of you want it to be scripted in terms of i want i want to make sure we have enough and i want to make sure that it matches closely to what was expected more, more closely than I was willing to go initially. Yeah. I'm also a serial overshooter. Yeah, <laughs> that's a that's a whole other thing, man. Hey, you, man, there's you, unlimited you storage a, everywhere. You unlimited. Just, you we can did just, just clear it up. The cloud, man. Hours, the cloud can take it all. In our week to uh, so. clean up our unlimited storage, <laughs> it worked out. So, so other than <laughs> semantics, does it make a little more sense now? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it's funny, too, because now you do a little self-reflecting as well. And, like, no, there's there's been many a time where I've, you know, I've seen you and I have continually, like, worked through our working relationship when we're on set and, like, what that, what that looks like. And I think we're finding, you know, better and better ways to do that. And that was, like, that, that moment uh, with the example you, you just used was, was awesome because it was, like, we, we shot this scene... And we sat there and we rewatched a lot of the takes to make sure that we got what we needed. We told the actors, give us five minutes, go yep. grab a water if you want. Mm-hmm. We're going to take the time to do this right. Yep. And and we reviewed it. And I think two heads are always better than one um, mm-hmm. because you know, everybody's thinking about something different. Um, and it was, it was a beautiful thing. And we've had, uh, we've had instances of this, you know, before where it's like, I'll look at a shot and I'm like, I don't know, man, you know, think about this. And, and, uh, I think it's good that nobody leans super to the to the point of like you you gotta you know what I mean we have this plan you better stick to it and this is what it is and like yeah. if you deviate at all that's bad because I feel like that just crushes creativity. Well, mm. we, the opposite side of that is so that was an example of where you know I trusted your judgment on at least let's take a look. The other opposite side of that coin was um, during forty eight hours. One of my favorite mm-hmm. shots that we ended up getting and were able to use was a shot Daniel was like, hey, I, f- I took a photo and it looks cool. And it was from an angle I didn't even think about shooting of the car scene yeah. of uh, seeing lights turn on uh, on the background of an actor in the, f- the foreground. The actor is like all blacked out. And you just see the silhouette. And I was like, that mm-hmm. shot looks so cool. And then. I was like, Cole, I need to shoot this. And you're like, dude, it's way too late. We're missing. People need to go home. Like, like we're way past curfew to get this out. And I was like, no, just give me 10 minutes. I'm going to get what I need. And it ended up being one of my favorite shots it was a great shot. from it. But it's like that back and forth is like, I trust yeah. you. You trust me. Maybe not implicitly from the beginning. But at this point, we've been working together long enough. It's like, I, if you are 
if you feel confident that we need to review something, it's like, yeah, sure. It's, it takes like 10 seconds. Like how mm. arrogant would you have to be to just like blow it off every no. time? Every once in no. a while I might be like, I know I'm good, but, uh, <laughs> well, you, yeah. You it, and most of the time when it. you tell me we're good, I'm like, okay. Yeah. You know, but yeah. I had actually seen the footage was the only no. part of that. Yeah. A lot of times it's just like, Hey, we good. And you're like, yeah. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Just remember you're going to have to take care of this later. Well, you yeah. Know, that's usually that's my, that's usually the drone footage later. I'm like, Hey, did you get those shots? You're like, yeah, dude, they're good. I'm like, are they? And you're like, yeah, yeah, no, they're good. I'll look at them <laughs> later. I'm like, yeah, these are pretty good, but every once in a while, we got a little floating shot, and I'm like, hey, where, where's that angle at? And you're like, yeah, the wind wasn't working out, and it's like, all right, man, we'll, we'll, we'll fix it in post. We'll, we'll get it in post. Don't worry. Dude, there used to be so much that I just, like, forgot, didn't get, didn't know how to get it, and I just be like, we're okay. Which is funny, because that's the opposite of you maybe going off script or off from the initial, maybe it wasn't intentional, mm. but, like, it just, eh, hey, whatever, it's, it'll, it'll work out. We got plenty of footage. Well, and that was kind of part of the thing that you and I, again, learning our differences. And there were so many things that I saw you take that were just piles of dog doo-doo. For drones? Well, d- drone, I mean, whatever it was. Like, this was part of the reason why I wanted to partner with you because I saw <laughs> what you could do. You know, I mean, that's one of the things, like, with a good editor is you could take... <laughs> you could see so much doo-doo. <laughs> you could take... No, well, that's the thing. You could take crap footage yeah and turn it into something that looked really good oh yeah you know what i mean (laughs) and that was just like how triflix one made it so long well i wasn't i wasn't necessarily a great dp initially (laughs) i was just a really good Good. editor exactly (laughs) and it's i i see the importance of it so much and it's you know i don't want anybody to get the wrong idea that we're like molding things into a way that's that's not authentic Mm. but I still think that like it's an art and it's a, you know, it's a, it's a learned, it's a craft. Yeah. There's like, I, there was one Tuesday tip that we shot that was so incoherent. Like I was just, I don't even know what was wrong with me that day. I had <laughs> the only, I think the only thing was I did not, I don't think I had an outline <laughs> and I was just, you gotta I was, have it. I was really just mm-hmm. going off the rails. I knew, I knew my point A and my point B, but I had nothing in between. Yeah. So, it, again, it felt very mm. just rambling incoherency. Like we got done and I said, do you think Daniel I was like, do you think that you have something you can work with? He's like, Oh yeah. You know how chilly is. He's like, I got you, man, whatever. And I was like, are you sure? He's like, yeah, it's cool. And he put it together and I didn't even recognize it. Yeah. I was like, huh. I, I, it was, it was very well done. And I, th- that is invaluable. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm, I mean, that's like an actor. You just throw them in a set and it's like, um how well can they perform and i was talking yeah. to cat about this um about trying to find some actors for a role we needed and i was like well what, what's their background are they theatrical or are they performance like camera based like not necessarily hollywood obviously we're in indiana but like are they do they have familiarity being on camera and she's like a good actor can do both and i was like ah i never thought of it that way it's like yeah. if somebody is an expert it doesn't matter what you hand them they will be able to kind of molded into something professional like and and uh, not you know there's always exceptions like we've sure. we've we've run into some real bad footage before but like sometimes there's nothing you can do with it but yeah they're much more capable based on their expertise yeah That's for funny. sure like our brains are like hardwired to tell stories like and communicate in narratives and that is like our entire profession just taking something and like, you no, know, Daniel, he's like, he turned it into like something that like, uh, your brain is, can like understand. <laughs> yeah. And well, I think it's just so cool. Uh, especially with just the, even those walkthroughs and, you know, like that thing with the technology and stuff like you're, you're just telling a story it may not be super interesting, but it's a story you're taking on a journey. Yeah, for sure. I yeah. mean, that was like, uh, the one again, I'm where we try not to name names of some of our larger clients for obvious reasons. Mm-hmm. So there was, there, we have a company we work with out of um, uh, Northern Indiana and you know, they kind of deal I'm trying to think in fasteners. How about that? And we, we shot this whole like kind of like life cycle of where this screw goes. And hmm. I, it was it was a short thing, but like Tristan did such a good job of like he was like okay we're gonna do this and do this and I mean you're kind of following the line that it's going in, but it was still like the angles and the way it was set up. Yeah, you know it's not like somebody standing there with their phone and they shot the thing where it went and then they <laughs> threw it together and they said look it's great 
and and that serves its own purpose but it was just the fact that like you can tell you can just see when somebody's mind is working in another direction that like yeah i this this fastener like it's not it's not just that like yeah it has a life of its own that it's going through here and i'm gonna find the way to highlight this in the right way how it's made yeah exactly yeah it, and it was that was a, a one of my favorite clip. projects that we've done just and it was like it was so dumb like yeah. in hindsight like if someone gave you this project you're like well, that's so stupid but it was hey i just need a video of my product and it's like a bolt and i'm like okay and they're like and it <laughs> i want you to show like this machine where it's made and i want you to show these two other machines on like how it gets from here to here and i'm like okay and it's like on paper it's like bolt yeah four other shots and it's like all right good and i'm like you know what like, how will that ever be interesting <laughs> what do you do with this and then i remember there's this uh movie um and i i'm sorry whoever is out there that isn't <laughs> listening to this that made the movie but like there yeah. was a movie where it's the life cycle of a bullet and it's like all right the bullet's Ugh. crafted and then it, it's sold oh, yeah. and then it's it's drug moneyed and it's over here and then in, it mm. ends with this amazing climactic shot of uh of a bullet going through uh, a child soldier and uh um, <laughs> Oh. It's a great depiction because you get an emotional story from mm -hmm. a piece of metal. An inanimate, an inanimate object. Yeah. In Sorry. The, in the perspective of the camera throughout this whole life cycle, it's like, well, how do you it was show the camera moves through this press and through these metal, like uh, the extrusions and the punches and the dies and all this. And it's like, it was all done in CG. Yeah. I'm like, well, we can't do CG. So it's like, you give me a loose constraint of get four shots. You give me a tight constraint of it. it can't be CG because that's our own physical constraint we have to put on ourselves. We can't. And then they're like, ah, get it to me in like in 24, 48 hours, whatever. Like, get it done quick. We Jeez. just want it back. Usually the case. And I'm like, I'm just really pumped for this. I'm like, I have a general idea. No yeah. script, nothing. They just gave me a general idea of what to do. I get all these shots and I'm like, I know I can do like these things in post. And like, I have this vision for what it could look like. And I'm mm -hmm. not writing any of it down. And then I get all my shots. I offload it while Cole's still doing his photography off on the side because he we're doing a double day. He's doing photos. I'm doing video at the same time. Yeah. And before he was finished shooting photos, I was just so amped about this project. And I, I thought it was really cool. I had the whole thing edited <laughs> within like an hour of being on set and shooting wow. it. It was awesome. And I showed it to the client. <laughs> they're like, oh, dude, this is you shot this today? I was like, yeah. And they're like, that's oh, really cool. Oh, so you like, you brought your laptop or something? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I brought my laptop awesome. and I just worked on set. And it's 100%. like, I, I love Great. whenever I get a project that I'm just so pumped about that it's like, I don't want to wait till I get back in the studio. I don't want to like check my emails right now because I'm behind on emails. <laughs> it's like, I just want to edit. It and was amazing. But the only thing is the producer came out in me and I was like, Oh, now they think we can get videos done in an hour. Uh, <laughs> the expectation has been set. Uh, this is the previs. <laughs> yeah, they got me on a Bing day. It wasn't a bong day, so <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. He was dialed, and that was the last day he was dialed. Yeah, <laughs> he hasn't been dialed since. <laughs> I was dialed last night. <laughs> Woo, Five a.m. So yeah, that was that was just so much fun. I forgot about that shoot. <laughs> I hmm. shot a bolt. <laughs> Well, while, well, let's go back to our initial kind of what we were talking about, though. Like, give me give me some of your own examples on where you think having a script is, is probably a good idea. Of course. Um, I think for like 48 hour film challenge to so like short films where we have a crew of people that are trained specifically for roles, while I would love to do an improvised thing, um, it would have to be something everybody's completely on board with. But if people come with the expectation of this is highly produced mm -hmm. script and that goes with, you know, whether it's an independent project like 48 hours film or a client project, it's like the client's paying us. They deserve to know what we're going to produce. We should put together the storyboard and the script and all that and the shot list. If there's any dialogue and stuff like that, and it's like, obviously they deserve that in those mm -hmm. situations. But, um, I think, depending on what it is the level of like constraint for the script gets looser and looser from there so like the um the tip videos i like the looseness of it but i think you have to have a script because like you said you didn't feel comfortable on camera whenever you were producing it and watching it back the first time before you handed it to daniel to edit it together luckily we have a good editor yes and um we were able to make it work but like depending on what the context and what the target audience is is kind of what determines how uh it's like a like a microscope the, like the fidelity of it is like how how wide do you need to see how tight do you need to see and so in that mm -hmm. same way it's like how 
how loose or how constrained do the the scripts need to be is just entirely based on yeah. it. Uh, comedians go through similar processes like um, Bill Burr and all of them. Yeah. Like they're constantly like pitching uh, like jokes to each other, like between them, their friends and like they're going through and they're kind of slowly like refining what's happening. Yeah. But at the same time, like it's a joke. It's a story that you're going to tell. It's going to vary from like time to time. Yeah. And so they know the general like kind of process of like telling the story and taking you on this journey. Yeah. And like, boom, the punchline. But like, it's not always word for word. Like some comedians are. Well, Bill Burr's a phenomenal example. I didn't yeah. even think about that. So like, Bill Burr is a great comedian, but like his rise in popularity isn't because he's a well rehearsed comedian. Like mm-hmm. a lot of comedians are popular because they practice their jokes. They go up, they're like a magician. Imagine yeah. a magician that's like, doesn't yeah. practice you're like well you're <laughs> trick i hope this trick works <laughs> yeah. yeah i'm just gonna wing it it's like no you want a magician similar to a comedian you want them to be well rever- well versed so that they can get everything out because you're paying to be there you're paying to see them you want mm-hmm. that experience to mm-hmm. be flawless i mean there is some yeah. comedy in people failing and like that's what america's funniest video is for but aside from that it's like if you're paying 400 dollars a ticket you're there for the show <laughs> it's yeah. true and the reason bill burr rose in popularity m- most aggressively like he had a gradual <laughs> incline his whole career but the thing that s- rose him up was whenever he went off script at mm-hmm. one of the one of his shows and just started like nobody was <laughs> liked his jokes wasn't it like philadelphia yeah, or the something philly, the philly yeah. roast yeah 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 <laughs> So he's like up on stage and people are kind of booing him and like they don't like his jokes. They don't think he's funny. And then in a turn of events, he just starts roasting the whole audience. He roasts the entire city of Philly. And they loved it. And they loved it. (laughs) Completely off script. So it's like I love that about a a talented professional. I think the only reason people can do... um, Well, it's not a new concept, but the only reason people can do that is because they've rose to a level of expertise that enables them to know what are the rules and when can I break them? And that's something Mm -hmm. we've talked about with Daniel as an editor. And we talked about in general for all of the way we create is like, what happens if you break this rule? Why is this rule here? And until you understand that you can't break it, but it's like, we shot a video the other day um, at a, at the beach and I broke a rule on accident (laughs) <laughs> and it worked out but that's not that's yeah. not how it should be i shouldn't break yeah. a rule on accident and then find out it works later i would rather test that ahead of time oh that's why uh, justin Royland and dan Hartman work so well together because justin Royland's like what would be funny like right now what would happen <laughs> it, like I, what's just some random thing you would not expect like he's looking for he finds absurdity. The, the absurdity of breaking the rules of like what a TV show or story is. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Like, it's different. It's and new. Harmon builds it up so well. So when that stupid thing happens, it's really funny. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's why on Monday I said, guess what? Now we're going to start doing what we call pre-flight checklist. <laughs> <laughs> and you're going to check your stuff off a list and make sure that your frame, uh, your frame rates, right? Well, sure. it turns out it was, it, the footage would not have looked as good if I didn't break that rule. Correct. <laughs> Correct. We, we ended up we getting still well. We we got <laughs> way more light because of it. Correct. But there's there's better ways to do that. So like it, no, so <laughs> what you could have learned is like all right, you do the thing that's on the pre flight pre flight checklist, and then tweet. Think about it. Like all right, can we do anything else and make mix it up here? So. I guess without throwing my whole self and the company under a bus, um, <laughs> halfway through the shoot, I did notice the error and I checked the footage and I realized it looked really good. And that's why I continued the rest of the shoot with it. But um, yeah. it was the shutter was, uh, wasn't was uh, one over double FPS. Huh. And what that means is my shots just look darker, but they also get more motion blur, which means they smear more like the, the way people move me. It's like Save It Private Ryan's always the example. It's like really rigid and you yeah. see every single movement. It's like really... Uh, I don't know. It's rigid, yeah. whatever. Put your hand in front of your face and just move it really fast. Yeah, That's yeah. Motion blur. Blurry. It was extra blurry. Um, but because we were slowing down the footage mm. and a lot of it was at 50 FPS, it didn't matter. That's over cranking, I believe. I don't know. L- look it up. I think it's over cranking. So <laughs> these, are uh, rules, it's over cranking. these are rules that like I, if I had known ahead of time and I broke them, I wouldn't have found out accidentally it was okay to break that rule. I would have known at the time mm-hmm. like well you know it's it, it is what it is but 
Yeah. Well, I don't care. Discovered anyway. And that's the thing is, I don't care what you say or what you do. At the end (laughs) of the day, like people, you learn, you learn on the job. Like you're always getting experience from something because not, you know, not two shoots are ever alike. Mm-hmm. You know, the lighting is different could just based on the way that we shoot or the not yeah. not the way that we shoot, but the the clients that we work with, and the the segments of the market that we work in. Heck, every podcast, the angle is different. That's true. <laughs> uh, <laughs> not this time. Not with yours. No, I dialed it in. See, you know? dialed it in. Uh, but but again, my mind instead, it's like, OK, we learned something. That's great. Yeah. But again, it needs to be on the list as a possible option in the future, right? That it needs mm. to be like, I know that I want to achieve X, right? So this is how I get there, yeah. and that's a process yeah. that, like, oh, uh, we're we're starting shooting at six o'clock. Most likely, by the time we're done, it's going to be dark. We need to think about lighting. You know, we're in the shadows. Blah blah blah. This would be we're going to slow down the footage in the end because it's a highlight reel. Like, how do we how do we set the shots for that? And you go, you know what? I know what I'm going to do, hmm. right? Yeah. Now, of course, a lot of times those things are you found by discovery and now we'll know. And you go, okay, you know, I need to think about this. Maybe I need to overcrank or undercrank. I don't know. But you, you, these are this is a process you're going through in your head. And I think that for growth and for repeatability, yeah. those have to be there. Yeah. Like a little, uh, little gym I, I left behind and I'm like, oh, I, it, it's a little quarter in the couch I find later. I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot I could do this. That's cool. Which, <laughs> which that's the hilarious thing about this. I don't know if you've ever thought about it this way, but like there are things that we, you and I have brought to the table as co-founders, right? Yeah. And those, those things have been put in place, but there are things that we learn every day that then start at the hierarchy, right? That starts at us and it trickles down to everybody else. And we're all, we, mm. and, you know, it's, it's put into place as policy and it just cracks me up because it's like the blind leading the blind. Yeah. You know, you like know what I mean? Like, sometime uh, wiped on my desk now. <laughs> I, 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 picked, I picked a chip up off the floor the other day. I was and impressed. I ate it. <laughs> I don't care where it goes as long as it's not on the floor. <laughs> Eat the chip. Eat the chip. Where you decide to dispose of it is on, is on you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, funny. It's, it, it's just kind of funny you yeah. know i mean there needs to be people to put things in place but it's just funny mm-hmm. it's like oh pioneers you, man we're not the blind leading the line we're just pioneers yeah, yeah there you go we invented driving around these rocks we invented <laughs> filmmaking in columbus that's no one's ever done it before no, nobody the greatest no podcast in columbus greatest by the greatest <laughs> we're the great of the greats the greatest filmmaking this day the greatest company David, you know what? Speaking of filmmaking, oh man, you know sometimes it, it's just better companies. if it's not a camera. Correct. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think about that. People do stuff. Yeah, live action. Yeah, right. Live. What, what do you mean what by is no that called? camera? Uh, theater. Maybe, oh, perhaps. if you're, you're in the Midwest, going? yes. Yeah, I'll go to the theater. <laughs> <laughs> theater. <laughs> <laughs> There's one not far from here. I hope. So yeah, there. You- <laughs> <laughs> now you, Passion for Acting now Theater Company. <laughs> Passion for Actors Theater Theater Company. <laughs> I can't even say it now. Passion I'm for so sorry. Theatings. Okay, we <laughs> we love you. Restart. Passion for Acting Theater Company has a passion for bringing excellent and entertaining live theater to audiences in Bartholomew County. Passion for Acting Theater Company, created in 2018, performs dinner theater productions at the terrific and eclectic Willow Leaves of Hope on Square in Hope, Indiana. Their first production, The Miracle Worker, was a huge success and received great reviews from audience members. Since then, Passion for Acting Theater Company has performed 10 shows, ranging from comedies like The Kitchen Witches and The Odd Couple to drama and suspense like the original murder mystery Angel Street to classic children's literature like The Secret Garden and Anne of Green Gables. Their next show will be Kalamazoo, a a comedy about what happens when older folks try to get into the online dating scene. It will be performed at Willow Leaves of Hope in February, just in time for Valentine's Day, or to laugh the winter blues away. Enjoy delicious dinner and a great night of entertainment at Willow Leaves of Hope. Phone 812-341-7251 now to make reservations for this Laugh Out Loud comedy. Woohoo! 
So <laughs> I feel like Theater. all. I, I feel like. I, I, Everybody should just be so glad that we're in the filmmaking business mm-hmm. and, and, and we're not writing or reading books. Yeah, we're not radio show hosts. <laughs> yeah, we're not yeah. writing. You know what I think we should get into? Audiobooks. We should yeah, just we read should. audiobooks. Dude, I would love an audiobook that just was real improv. <laughs> like just real <laughs> loose. Like an audio book. No, no, no. Like it's an audio book, but what? like like Justin Roiland when he drinks before he reads a script. <laughs> Yeah, like he just like you throws read things a paragraph, in. and then like five minutes later, like after a drink, you try to remember what that paragraph was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you give actually, a summary. That's actually, a pretty good. But idea. I mean, like he reads his he reads I would the listen script to that. To just kind of I would listen to that <laughs> just mid tangent in the book. You just, would just never know if you were actually hearing the book or, or his thoughts, his narration, or <laughs> yes. like of, of the. That'd events. be really funny. Yeah, that's a. I would love that. That's or fantastic. like you tell tell like a portion of the story to like a kid, and then like have the kid tell. Tell it back what they think what happened. <laughs> that would be really funny too. Do you guys have anything else to add uh, for for the scripts? Scripts. 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 Kroger's. Yeah. Scripty. Yep. I got to go to Kroger's to get my scripts. My Kroger's. <laughs> <laughs> I got nothing, man. I'm. I think uh, we tapped. We tapped. I it. think I'm pretty happy with yeah. where we ended. Okay. Um, it's a good story. There's one thing I'd like to throw in here real quick before we go to our new segment. Hmm. Tristan posed a question to me because yesterday, uh, when we're recording this, uh, yesterday, they, they drew for the Powerball lottery. And at the time of drawing, it was at $2.09 billion. Wow. It's a lot of money. I don't know that 09 kind of might as well round down. Same with that much. 2.1. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I actually had a conversation with my wife about it and yeah. Tristan prompted me that night. He said, Hey, it just out of nowhere. This is my favorite thing. I just get a message from him. He's like, Hey, throw this on the podcast, dude. He's like, we should talk about what you would do if you won the lottery. Yeah. So never, already, never new concept. No one's ever talked about this. before. No one's ever talked about this before. <laughs> no but way. The lottery is also, I don't think it's ever been this, this high. So this I don't is, know. I heard it historically. It was like the second highest, but that was when it was at 1.5 billion. I don't know if it's ever been this high. Yeah. So, uh, I did read something that like cash value was at like half a half a half a billion. Either way, yeah, right? Yeah, and like so, after taxes or whatever. Exactly. Yeah. So keep that in mind. But still, you know, um, what would you got? I'd like to start with David. What What would you do if you won? Buy a new server. <laughs> Just ask, answer for last episode. Dude, that'd be the <laughs> server. Dude, Linus would be a little jealous with whatever server you spend half a billion on. No, I wouldn't on. spend it all on that. $500 million server. Yeah? It's AI. It just does all the do. editing for us. I mean, I'd probably pay off my car and then immediately sell it and get like a Tesla. No, I wouldn't do that. because I don't, man. I wouldn't do that because I don't have like a, a house. You, would you work? I think it would be really boring if I didn't work. Yeah. Like, what am I going to do? <laughs> I don't know. You have half a, half a billion dollars. You could invest it and just live off the, uh, the I would, interest. I would do, like, the smart thing and, like, calculate, like, how much I would need to live each year. Dude, I and did, then some. Too practical. I did, yeah, I, I know. It's a real boring answer. It is. I did the math on it. <laughs> I, think, I think I did. I'm, I think I, I'm trying to remember what I did. I think I did the math on a billion that like a percent of a billion is like 10 million. Yeah. yeah you, so like if you put it in the bank and it just made a percent every year, like how much was it after taxes? 10 taxes million. <laughs> yeah. They said somewhere in like 555 million, something like that. 55 million. Dude, I, that's just absolutely insane. That much money. Yeah. Which that was kind of the, my wife and I's conversation, but what, what would you do, Tristan? I, I put a lot of thought into this, man. Yeah. I would, do you uh, close the doors here? Uh, no, no. Actually, I would create more work for myself because that's what I would do if I had God money. <laughs> I love it. God money. God got that God money. I would, uh, dude. I would just buy land, like a good amount of land, far away from like. What are you talking? Ma- What's a ma- good amount? Like I'm talking uh, five hundred acres. I I would say about maybe th- upwards of there. Yeah. Okay. And I I would wow. I would start building a city. I would start <laughs> building a small city. Welcome to Bongville. So, Welcome to Bing Bong Town. But I, I, I'm so I, I just want to do my own thing, man. So I did boring math. If you did, it was fifty five million. Five hundred fifty five. Five hundred and just multiply million. by ten. What is it? Yeah. My, no, uh, well, you don't know the math I'm doing. So I, I, oh, if you interest. gave yourself like a salary 
of a hundred thousand every year. Yeah. It would take 55,000 years for you to go through it all. <laughs> well, and this was the conversation my wife and I had because I told her because she was like, would you still work? And I was like, oh, that's a loose term at that moment. Yeah. Because I said, you have to like that, that amount of money is, is it's inconceivable. It's well, work it's, to spend it. Well, it's generational wealth. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's wealth of like, oh, you don't work. Your kids don't work type of thing because mm-hmm. just like if you were smart with it and you reinvest and you do the right things, you hire the right people to work your money then yeah. again, you would not have to work for the rest of your life in your children's lives and their children's lives. And she she was like, I didn't think about it that way. I would invest it into like the community. Big, I would just go Bitcoin. around fixing things. Like, and be like, what, you, your house? Like you need like new washer dryer? Okay, you got a new washer dryer. I love it. Tristan, was that all? Uh, no, I'd like- Land, I, city, I would, town, you'd build your own town. I'd build my own- But who would live there? It'd, it'd be a it would be like an HOA <laughs> he would of pop, sorts. Populate it himself. It'd be like an H. It'd be a gated, <laughs> not a gated community. It'd be a gated city. Okay, but who lives there? Such just a you? application based. Lame. Application based. Yeah, yeah. No, That's this what is God wants. This is going to be is, everything this, Mass Ave should have been. This is really what you thought about. Yeah. No, I would love. I've always wanted to go into politics. Right. I like that he doesn't want to go into politics. He just wants to build his own city. Yeah, no, like actually my, circumvent my the whole favorite, thing. My, my, my second favorite video game is uh, the, the city skylines. Like <laughs> I was going to say like Sim City. I, 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 uh, we've like talked about this everywhere. loosely. <sighs> I go around to towns and cities and I drive on roads and I just see too many things that I dislike <laughs> about them. And it drives me nuts. <laughs> too many cooks in the kitchen, man. And the That's problem the problem. Is, yeah. I, I, I'm very loose about scripts, but there are certain things in the world that I just can't get behind. And one of them is poorly implemented cities and planning yeah. and zoning. I, we were driving through North Vernon the other oh, day. He has strong feelings about this. I was driving through North Vernon the other day. And I, was, <laughs> I was really upset. Not because yeah. I was in North Vernon. Town's fine, whatever. Because there was a building at the edge of the uh, the high school, the, the middle school. There's a church, whatever. Church, yeah. fine. Right next to that is a commercial building of like a like a little factory with like automotive parts and stuff outside. I'm like, wh- who visually thought it was I fine just, to zone commercial right next to a school? Like, I, why? I, I've played it's such a silly I've thing. I played like City Skylines in uh, Sim City. You probably put the nuclear and, plant right next to the school. <laughs> no, I'm just imagining you like you just take everything that happens there and like you just do it in Columbus. You're like, I don't understand like why there's houses right here. The roads just keep going, and like the Reynolds have lived there for. 30 years and also <laughs> just block a road where their house used to Bye. be yeah that's yeah. not efficient <laughs> yeah it's like You're just those types chaos. of things i would i would that's what i would do and it's like and he uh, thinks people are gonna apply to live here you're gonna move <laughs> cemeteries no, it's basically like i want to just build another caramel at this point fishers avon well, i just want to need another caramel dude, that is fishers? so funny i but i would build it better because but you're blowing my mind stop with wow. all the roundabouts Stop well, it. I, I like roundabouts. Normally they're fine, but not whenever you make them too small like the ones in Columbus. Oh, the ones that are too small are dumb. Columbus, big bigger roundabouts. <laughs> bigger roundabouts. <laughs> I don't know. It's just... I Put I'm, it up there with a petition to see Mr. Beast's birth certificate. <laughs> oh, that's what we should do. Make Mr. Beast the mayor. <laughs> yeah, I, I'd, yeah. I'd vote for Jimmy. Bring him in. Hire Jimmy. Him. Yeah, we'd be on our own. Well, it wouldn't own be other. a vote. It would just make him mayor. <laughs> yeah, you'd just say, you're mayor. mayor. You're mayor. Uh, yeah, it's my city. I can it's your I city. Want. You're just like, <laughs> yeah. But uh, this other thing was like running past a strip mall and the face of all the buildings were different. All the signs were different. I'm like, why? You zoned the city. You can make them look whatever you want. You let all these <laughs> I think companies a, come in. A mini dictator over I here. I was like, man, dude, there's a place you can move to that's <laughs> like that. It's so silly. I just... <laughs> to Russia with are all this Powerball money. Every, everybody's got to wear the same clothes. <laughs> no, the clothes are fine. Whatever. Uh, I don't know. You're like a... Actually, you know what? No, I have some strong opinions about Walmart after 2 p.m. Here we go. <laughs> 2 a.m. Sorry. All 2 the Triflex branded clothes Dang. at Walmart. Yeah, you're, no. I'm a very aesthetic person. You're a... Uh... Not for my, I'm wearing black t-shirt. Your and wish list is is definitely the most entertaining out of all of us. Yeah. Half yeah. A, half, well, I thought it was 1.5 billion or 2.5 billion. I was like, yeah, that's plenty of money. Half a, half a billion? It's like that might be a little tight for a city. 
But I think if you <laughs> write, isn't there usually like two options? Like, can't you get it all all as one, or it's like a gradual payout, a and they time. take less yeah. taxes from oh, it? Oh yeah, yeah. No, I, what's dude, I, wanna, dude, I wanna know what Columbus's half, budget is. Half a billion dollars is a lot of money. Well, even at, like you said, ten yeah. million a year or whatever. You said uh, that ten million. A, it's like I could run a city on ten million a year. We could build out some infrastructure. Isn't there dude, a book yeah. based off of this type of situation? I think you, Tristan, might have been telling me about it. I can't read. Or like somebody. <laughs> Um, is given like a hundred million dollars, and you have to spend every single penny of it, or else, like you don't actually get to keep it, or something like I that. I thought that was a movie concept. It might have been a movie. Yeah, yeah. it I'm, was just interesting, just, like how inconceivable it is actually spend. Oh, I'm pretty sure money. it's a. I'm pretty sure it's a Kevin Hart movie with a dude in a wheelchair. <laughs> I don't know. I don't remember. I'm pretty no, sure it's a movie. I don't think so. I saw that John movie. I don't, about. <laughs> I don't think. <laughs> I'm really bad at watching movies. Wow. What was? What about you and your wife? I was gonna say I would love to segue on that. That would be awesome. But um, <laughs> yeah, I don't want to talk about it. Uh, no. So she was just in awe. It was funny because she was like, "Would you still work?" And I was like, "No." And she was like, really? And I was like, "I mean, technically, the funny thing is, is my my work is my hobby. So I would I would essentially you would just say no to more clients. <laughs> no, because here's the thing. Like, I definitely said like I there's a hierarchy of things like i would want to there would be things that we would do like obviously you know you pay off some things and just feel feel the the feeling of like no more debt type of thing um she Mm. wants to travel so i said we'd probably just get rid of everything and restart and just Mm. and just like not even have a house um and then just like go travel for a while Mm. um but i would continue to you know help triflix build because I mean, you still need to, yeah. right? You need to do those things, and that's that's my opportunity as well to help the people around me. Just saying, if you won and you gave me like two million, you don't ever yeah. have to see me again. Like it's cool if you just want to go do your own thing. Like you say, don't have to grow Triflix anymore if you want. Just saying, you're not obligated. <laughs> hey, I was gonna say we should all pull in, split it three ways. <laughs> I can start five Triflixes for that price. I mean, for Only sure. Five. But the thing is, is like I wanted to. Well, you said with, a city. one across the country. I'm starting a city with the rest. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, <laughs> but I would definitely like. I mean, doing all those things personally, mm-hmm. um, and like one of the things we talked about too was being able to help pay off some of the debts that our church has, because yeah. I know that's tough. Mm-hmm. Um, so being able to do things like that, and then we would also we would really want to help friends and family. Dude, you hit that church with your ten percent income for that year. They don't. They don't need any extra. They're good to go. They're good for a while. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing, right? But it's like uh, we would, you know, give money to our parents, make sure they're set for retirement, and yeah. and take care of them. And then again, that would, you know, uh, Do they... I think the hard part is, is like I would want to help everyone, but but again, it's like if I mm. am I doing anybody a service, right? If I go, you know what, Tristan you're you're a good dude i love you like we we work together and like i want to see your family off well and so i'm going to give you a million no, and then you, i'm like you gotta do the alpha mindset like you don't give me anything because you want me to work hard so i can achieve your level of growth yeah. in life but this is kind of what i'm saying <laughs> is like that's somehow somewhat how i feel about it like it was like my dad you know was like i'm not going to give you this because you need to learn the value of it and i'm like da 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 yeah <laughs> Now, don't get me wrong, because Audrey, Audrey was like, she would just give money to everybody. And I was like, well, they can, it would still be like, hey, guys, we're going to go jump on the jet and we're going to go fly to this place and we're just going to hang out for like two weeks. You know what I mean? Like the, the mm. lifestyle would be shared amongst everybody. And I, I couldn't imagine not helping you guys out in certain ways. And so all those things were thought about. But Dude, I, you just get a cure for narcolepsy. We'll call it good. <laughs> Right? Do they <laughs> announce for, for ha- who two? wins? So you get to choose whether you have if you're anonymous or if you're if, you're if you come out. If you're if you would, you if you're, I would you go choose? anonymous, dude. You got to be a baller, man. You're just all no. out. The first thing you do, the, that they you say, do? the first thing you do is you hire a lawyer. Yeah, and you get all your affairs in order, and you 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 go anonymous because the problem is is people track these people down. Really, it gets it's really it's actually kind of scary because it's like people understand that you just came in all this money and like with five hundred million dollars, like ten thousand dollars, fifty thousand dollars, a hundred thousand dollars is it's dropping the hat for you. Mm-hmm. It doesn't make a difference. It's a write off at that it, point. It would take you more time. Like it would cost you more money 
trying to find out how not to pay it than just to pay it because like you have so much wealth at that point it would wait it's a waste of your time to try to fight those things yeah it's, fight what it, oh. any legality like if anybody wanted to sue you or let's say you owned owed money on a car or a house oh. like they're like hey you you owe us money still or maybe a debt or whatever school student loans like well people, i'm just saying weird people as well well you know, people anybody. go i know you made money and now we're going to be friends so that I can mooch yeah. off of you. Like it becomes this whole other thing mm. that you have to be careful about. So, you know, there would be people in my life that I would not ever I, see again. Well, yeah, no, <laughs> but like that you would have to be careful about how you disclose what your life is and like how much money you have. Yeah. You know, like mm. you have to be careful about these things because you can, you know what I mean? Like people have done worse for less. Yeah. Um, mm. But again, it would be, you know, taking care of my friends, taking care of my family and, and being able to, we, Audrey and I want to travel really badly. Yeah. And I have a uh, higher end taste in general. And so I would love to be able to like travel the way I would want to. And I, I would seriously, I'd buy a Z9 with all the lenses one could ever want, take everything with me. I would travel to all the different places I wanted to. We would drive everywhere, fly over, wherever, whatever we wanted. And then we'd just go stay in like all the national parks and take all these pictures and stuff. And I would go on this tour and then eventually come back, you know, and yeah. build a house and... yeah. I'd partner with like Nick Abstract and he would paint all those photos that you took, but like in an abstract form. There you go. Do a collab. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't want to sound too callous now. I would let all of my friends apply. Oh my first gosh. Hand. <laughs> I actually do on a, on a real note I, uh, with the whole, the What's reason the first law in your city. <laughs> oh my gosh. The first, the first law, law in my city is everyone has to take a financial literacy class. That's something I actually am passionate about. And it makes me really sad that more people don't get exposed to this earlier in life. Okay, what's for the whatever next reason. cool law? The cool I law? Uh, uh, weed. <laughs> <laughs> just the word weed? Just, just weed? Weed. Weed. Just, like, like you don't have to clear your weeds out of your yard? Yeah, no weed. Mm. It's a HOA, but no, you can leave your weeds out. It's fine. <laughs> um, no, it, it. I just... There's a lot of laws, I think, that are very antiquated in the U.S. now just because they've been existing for 200 years, and it would just... I don't know... I don't know how all this will work, but in my head, no, no I we make new laws, new laws, new laws. Do you hear Number, the way you said it? We make new laws, make new laws, <laughs> new laws. Uh, but yeah, no, bad. I, I would new love good. to. I have no grounds to do it, and in, in no background to do it now. But I would love <laughs> to be able to find someone to support to to help produce a financial literacy class in Columbus. It makes me really sad to see how dude there's nothing stopping us from doing that you understand that right like we've the, never had this no, conversation no, the, the thing that's stopping us is i'm working till 5 a.m sometimes and you're working you're out of the office because you have shoots and it's like when we're finally in the office it's like all right let's shoot a podcast so it's like there's For just sure. we're at a uh a but if it but, it, but limit if it has, our limitation is resources but if it has the potential to 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 become a revenue source then we can make it happen <laughs> see no i feel like the people that need financial literacy would not be investing in the financial literacy no they would <laughs> they would <laughs> no like this would have to this would probably be more charitable uh, and or government knowledge granted money. we're moving on if we could get on. a if we get someone to come on board i i would love to be nothing's able to. free well that's true <laughs> Okay. Yeah. What about that two million you were giving us? Is that not free? Yeah. What, what happened to that? Yeah. No. Now I said I would probably give you a million, but you get five hundred thousand. <laughs> oh man. <That's> not, <laughs> not enough. <laughs> yeah, it's not enough. Uh, it's, I don't think the server would could. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he was gonna spend one point five billion on a server, <laughs> all on one server. <laughs> I mean, the size of the whole office. I was gonna say Dude. I would just get a server that like a like a bunch of racks and like it would fill that whole room, and I'd be like, I don't know, figure it out. Here you go. <laughs> it would need its own cooling AC. Dude, you could start yes. a whole center. <laughs> yeah, we could build our own building. Um, oh, we we, sh- we could. could get a microwave. <laughs> 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 Okay. You know what I like? Whatever segment you're about to introduce. Uh, whatever comes next. Sorry, I thought I had to sneeze, so that's why I took a break because I was trying. I was trying to uh, hold it back. Um, okay, we have a new segment per usual. <laughs> We've been talking about this one since uh, since we started talking about season four, and Tristan has a problem, 
Uh, he is a director. He is, he's a DP. Yep. Uh, he do, he does a lot of things that have to do with movies and styles and all those things. And the man has not seen a lot of major, <laughs> like well liked cinematic experiences. <laughs> So the man hasn't seen movies. The man hasn't seen the movies. Why so not? we wanted to do a segment where we're going to give some names and he loosely knows of these movies. Maybe. Which which is good, yeah, to a certain degree. So we're going to give him some movie names. We've got 3 or 4 here. And we're going to give him these names and he's going to try to see if he can guess the plot. Okay. David and I have access to the actual plots of these movies as well have actually seen these movies yeah. so that helps one of them is also a couple of them some of my favorite movies of all time so yeah i'm interested to see where he goes with this now can, i again can i get like one hint per movie like if i ask I'm fine him, with that okay okay I'm fine with that <laughs> is this the one with that one guy in the wheelchair <laughs> yeah the right <laughs> <one? laughs> yeah where he has to spend a hundred million dollars in one year and Here it's not even close um so I, I'm going to try something new. I'm going to get a uh, picture in picture so we can see all of us at the same time. Have we ever done that before? No, it's a new feature just for the people wow. viewing. Okay. On, well, on YouTube. You let me know when you're ready because I'm uh, ready to go ahead and throw some of these out so here. get him centered up and make yeah. him a little bit larger so you can see him in the middle. Oh, this is great. And, Nobody's and ever done this before. For, for those of you listening or watching... Um, feel free to go all interactive here if you would like to pause the show um, if you have not seen these movies and see if you have a guess most likely you've seen them because you don't live in a cave yeah but if you haven't pause it go ahead throw something in there and then we'll uh, we'll fill in the blank later but go ahead and throw throw us a comment somewhere uh, and tell us if you got close we would love to hear about that so feel free to play along uh, again, these are these are some pretty big films. <laughs> Most of them are uh, older, but still, it's still one of those things where I think a lot of people have seen it. So we should you should be able to have some guess of some sort. Some so live editing is happening right now. Oh, live editing. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and start if that's okay. The just back because of the yeah, is just flashing. Okay. Good. Okay, so uh, Tristan, the first yeah. one, the name of this film. And uh, cool. here, I'm going to pull this up. So, the name of this film <laughs> is The Devil Wears Prada. Okay. Okay. Um, it was made in 2006. Yeah. No, I, I'm very familiar with this cover of this movie. There's, I love, there's a I red hear. high heel. Okay. And ah. it's got a like a little pitchfork on the bottom of it. And this is true. And Jennifer Aniston's a spy. <laughs> I have no idea. I, I, Jennifer <laughs> Aniston's a spy with uh, Tom Brad Pitt. Tom Brad Pitt? <laughs> yeah, Tom, Tom Pitt. Tom Brad Pitt. Tom Cruise Brad Pitt. Is and that Jen, a- Jennifer Aniston are spies, and she double crosses him oh, and okay. an, with Angelina Jolie. Okay. And then the, the spies try to kill each other, but they're in love. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is super funny. Uh <laughs> It was wrong. But the funny thing is, is you just described <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Smith. That's a, that's, that's a whole I, other movie. I always movie. assumed they were the same thing. None of these people are, are in this movie. <laughs> just so you know. Um, the two main wow. people are Anne Hathaway and... Ah, the, um, other, the younger Jen, and Glenn, Glenn, Glenn Close, I'm pretty yeah. sure. Um, it's based in New York and she, she uh, Anne Hathaway is a... Uh, like an intern for this lady uh she works for like a fashion magazine and the one okay. lady owns it oh. and she's just like super mean like like you know not cool to anybody like go get my mm. meal like uh. does she does does the Anne hathaway work her way up to the top of the company well so she she starts as kind of like this uh oh, this is my hint <laughs> Well, no, I mean, you were dead wrong. I'm going to give it to you. So, hold on a second. I'm going to read the actual storyline here for you, okay? Um, In New York, the simple and naive just graduated in 
<laughs> journalism, um, Andrea is what her name is in the movie, is hired to work as the second assistant of the powerful and sophisticated Miranda Priestly, um, the ruthless and merciless executive of the runway fashion magazine. Um, Andrea dreams to become a journalist and faces the opportunity as a temporary professional challenge. The first assistant, Emily, advises Andrea about the behavior and preferences of their cruel boss, and the stylist, Nigel, helps Andrea, which is... Um, uh, Tucci, uh, two chains. No, 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 no. Lil Wayne. Uh, uh, look up the cast for me real quick while I finish this. He's sure. he is a, he is one of my favorite actors. Um, but the stylist Nigel helps Andrea to dress more adequately for the environment. Um, she then changes her attitude and behavior, affecting mm. her private life and the relationship with her boyfriend Nate, her family and friends. In the end, she learns that the life that life is made of choices. Mm. So she kind of conforms to this whole thing because she. You know, she's like driven to make her boss like her and she wants to do all the right things. So she totally changes her lifestyle and everything to confine to that. But then she learns that like it I wasn't like, worth it. I feel like that's the same plot as like a Mary Kate and Ashley movie. Is that, <laughs> is that different? I feel like I've heard of this story before. I never knew that was the movie. It's a, it's, never seen uh, it. The movie Stanley is fantastic. Tucci. Stanley Tucci. Stanley Tucci. Can you uh, can show, show, because you probably don't know who we're talking about. No idea. I don't know actors either. Uh, Show me Stanley Tucci. We'll we'll get we'll get Siri going here. I keep clicking on the images; it keeps making them smaller. That oh, there map. you go. Oh, he doesn't look like he belongs at that company. Uh, he does a, he does a great job. Like oh. he's like a stylist. So, oh, yeah, really? he's super good in that movie. I'm just saying. Oh, okay. I'm watching a new show with him right now. I'll add it to the list. You should add it to your list, man. It is. Ah, it's good. It's pretty good. Okay. I've never seen it. Um, I, what? Devil Wears Prada. You haven't seen it either? Nope. That, that's the only movie on this I haven't seen. Oh, okay. Yeah. Did yeah, you, you know. know what it was? Uh, Pre or I no? knew that like the person in charge was mean. Gotcha. It. Mean, yeah. Mean girls. <laughs> mean girls. <laughs> I yeah. you, know that, you know that from The Office. Because there's a whole part of the office yes. where... Yes. yes, that's why he doesn't know, too. Yes. Because yeah, yeah. Michael Scott comes in, he throws his <laughs> coat on, and she does that stuff. He throws He's like, get me Armani. <laughs> Pam's like, what? <laughs> Uh, that's yeah. awesome. I haven't seen White Chicks or... Uh, <gasps> what was it? Mean Girls. Oh, I haven't seen either man. of those either. Oh, my god! We can do those another time. I kind of... I White Chicks. What's it about? Uh, two black guys are white girls, and they're... They are white girls? they become white girls they're cops <laughs> and they become white girls and then they're trying to catch a bad guy <laughs> gosh <laughs> oh they're trying to catch terry cruz terry cruz and i need you but he's nah, nah. into he's yeah he's like part of it but he's not like you know what i mean he's like not an integral mm -hmm. part of the story he yeah, just is like that's and then yeah that, that's all i know that's that's actually i'm impressed it's more than i thought you would know so you so you're good you know what okay. it's about that's the gist of it Okay, so this one uh, is a, is is in my top five. It's a beautiful movie. It's very well done. I love it. I love the actors and the actresses in this movie. Is it well scripted? It's fantastic. All of it's fantastic. Okay. Um, <laughs> and I, I know you know some of it, so that's why I'm interested to see what the story what you think the storyline is. So, um, Inception. Inception came out in 2010. Huh. Okay. Yeah. Do you um, know who the lead actor is? Yeah, the DiCaprio. Okay. Yeah. So, go ahead. Le what do you Leonard DiCaprio what's is... The uh, <laughs> dreaming and he has dreams and he's stuck inside of the dreams <laughs> and he wants out of the dreams <laughs> and, 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 and there's a top and he spins it and when it when it stops spinning he knows he's awake so he he spins he, he goes to the store and he, he, goes to the store. <laughs> <laughs> he buys a bunch of them <laughs> He buys a bunch of these tops and then he just keeps spinning them because because he loses them and then he's trying to figure out is he in a dream or not and some people put him in a box and they want to they want to study him and he's trying to get out of the box and the hallway's spinning. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure at, that's at, the storyline. He he's in a box and people are studying him. Is he in? Is he out? We don't know. 
he's in a box and he's stu- getting yeah, like studied. Yeah, like a glass, like a table, like a science table. Like uh, you were getting there, and then you totally. So you have not seen this movie? No, I have never seen it. I've I've, uh. I've watched the commercials, and I remember the bomb. <laughs> The horns. Wah. It was like one of the first movies to use those, and then it got oversaturated as a trailer trope. Wow. I'm I'm I really surprised so. you haven't seen that movie because it's actually completely wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even so I didn't even need a hint. I, that's, Dude, that's he's trapped in a box. He's in a and, box, and he buys all these tops at the store. So why, why, being why is studied? Is he not being studied by like people? No, no. I think the only thing he got right was dreams. Stuck and, inside of dreams. In, in dreams. And what and the top is used for. Th- what the top is for. I've yeah. seen the ending the shot. Only. Does he's, it stop? No, so he's he's a <laughs> he's a he's I thought I kept going at the end. No, so he's yeah. he's a thief. He he uses dreams and inception to be able to like go into other people's dreams mm-hmm. and coax information out of them. So mm-hmm. like corporate yeah. espionage, like that's kind of the main thing is like he'll take people and yeah. get secrets out of them through their mm. dreams mm. and the idea is he goes into these dreams to make them think that whatever they're trying to make them do was their own idea yes the inception mm. it That's literally the portion means of it, like yes. the, the beginning point of like this idea yeah. for them yeah it tricks it, them into thinking they're going to do something because of the implication <laughs> <laughs> yeah no it, like that whole thing is like the thing is is when somebody yes when somebody starts to figure out that they're in the dream then it starts to fall apart yeah uh, and that's when you start to see the weird things and happen he has to get out or you'll die you do have to get out yes does yeah. he go to a box to get out no no Has i don't it, know what the box i don't know why he keeps you're mentioning thinking the box. about the matrix uh, where they go <laughs> to like the too. phone box i've never seen matrix all the way through either i've seen like a little bit of the <laughs> oh first my gosh. one we'll that there's a the bug too. that goes in his belly button and then i was like i'm out <laughs> you're like i'm done yeah but so the other the other portion of this is that he he loses his wife um kind of to the whole thing you know, they were living in a dream and she kind of got scooped up in it and couldn't discern reality from the dream. Yeah. And she ends up like killing their children, which is yeah. kind of, yeah. And yeah. so, he, but, but he's always saying that he's looking for his kids and like, he can go back to them one day. And so that's where like the ending is like, you don't know if he's still in the dream or if he found his kids or what. Huh? Yeah. So mm-hmm. it's like, it's a whole thing. She actually, sorry, she, I don't know if she kills the kids, but the whole thing is that she kills herself, but yeah. she's always coming back to him in his dreams. Like uh, it's in his subconscious. So when he's in somebody else's dreams, like she shows up and sometimes ruins yeah. what dude, worst job ever. No, I, it doesn't, it yeah. doesn't look fun. Don't get me wrong, but it, it it's the, the, <laughs> the VFX and the whole story. Like it's, it's, I really, really think you'd like it if you saw it. Yeah, nah. I like Doctor Strange. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's like the same thing, right? No. The world's no. flipping. Which, by the way, hold on. Um, when did War of the Worlds come out? 2005. Oh, wait, 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 no, no. Is War of the Worlds, um, is that no. with, uh, is that the aliens come to Earth and then like they're like octopus looking things walking around with tom cruise yes yeah i've seen that movie it sucked the book was way better i actually read a book uh, wow whoa yeah. that i feel like that was the first movie with like the horns oh mm-hmm. yeah it probably was I, I felt like that's where that started because that was in 05 so inception came five years later oh, okay mm. it started the horn yeah <laughs> dude that movie was so dumb yes um okay <laughs> well you you kind of got there <laughs> Kind of. This is the one I think is going to really kind of go off the rails. So, okay. um, Interstellar. Yeah. Came out in 2014. Yeah. It's one of the greatest movies of all time. I, I've heard. You know what's funny? I did not know this was a Nolan film. Really? Yeah. yeah. Until I was doing research and I was like, now I know why I like it. <laughs> I, I, I like really it like his it's films. It's one of my favorite movies. Um, okay. So, you better get it right. So, yeah. So, what is the plot of Interstellar? I know you know some of it. Can I get a hint? Are they in space? <laughs> what do you think interstellar means? <laughs> <laughs> yes, they're, they're, they're in space. That was the definition of the word okay, interstellar. Okay, okay, okay. start okay. there. They're on, uh, they're, they're astronauts in space, and they're on a mission to discover something new, but something bad happens, 
and they're in a wormhole and then all of a sudden they're somewhere far away and they're on another planet and the climax is the it's an, it's a it's an ocean and they're in the middle of a wave and the wave comes and crashes and someone disappears and and then they make it home and everyone's happy except for the guy that died You were generically on track for a Generically bit. on track, but yes. There's also the story of Space 2001 Space Odyssey, so there's that. I actually <laughs> haven't seen that. I need to watch it. It's pretty much the same movie. Uh, is it? If, 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 <laughs> How do you if, know if, it's the same movie? If it, same follows, movie? <laughs> if it follows space movies, you're, it's a group of people on a mission, and then they get lost, and then there's a climax because they're on a planet. They didn't expect something, and all of a sudden, they make it out, and probably one guy dies, and then they're back mm. on the ship, and either they go home or they're stuck in space at the end. That's like every space movie. It's Sorry the, if I'm accurate. It's not really this movie. Nope. I'm going to read you the plot real fast. It's not long. Um, Earth's future has been riddled by disasters. <laughs> disasters. <laughs> Earth's future has been riddled by disasters, famines, and droughts. <laughs> there is only one way to ensure mankind's survival, interstellar travel. Mm. A newly discovered wormhole in the far reaches of our solar system allows a team of astronauts to go to where no man has gone before a planet that may have the right environment to sustain human life. Oh, so it's a bunch of astronauts in space. They go through a wormhole <laughs> while on a mission for something. I didn't realize the wormhole was intentional, but regardless, then they go on a planet. Is the planet w- like a big ocean? There's a wave. It's per- one of the planets. Oh, okay. So they go on multiple planets that I did not know. And I, yeah. I've only seen this once, so... Only once? Is that I like know. a three-hour movie, too? It's pretty long. Who's like it? Do you know who the lead is? Uh, Burnett Chick. Mm. All right, all right, all right. Oh, is it really? <laughs> yeah. Is yeah, it Matthew, Matthew McConaughey? McConaughey. That's yeah. awesome. No, it's a great movie. You should watch it. It'll probably, probably make you cry. I probably won't. It was really I good. I don't know. It's space movies? It's, I not, just don't. it's not a space dude, movie. Dude, get it's that. It's not a space <laughs> movie. It's not Star Wars. It's don't, not 2001 <laughs> State no, Space Odyssey. No, I like Odyssey. both of those There's movies. nothing generic about this movie. No, it's pretty... It's very good. Okay. It sounded really close to what it's, I guessed. It is nothing like what you They just went to guessed. more than one planet. It is... <laughs> Did someone die on the? Did someone die? What's the, when they go um, to a planet? Did anyone die? <laughs> You're missing the complete point of this movie. <laughs> I know you understand it more than I do. Give it to yeah. me. What the Give movie? It, like the rest of the? Because there's more to it than that. Okay. So the idea is so the the Earth is like falling apart and stuff. Mission. And there's a family there. On Earth. On Earth. Yes. Oh. So pe- there's people living on Earth currently. Okay. And they're trying to find a way to find another planet yeah. by going through this wormhole to live on. Yeah. And so it's Matthew McConaughey and his son and daughter. And they're like eight, nine, something like that. They're yeah, relatively they're young. Are they astronauts? And- no. No, just the dad. The McConaughey was like a engineer slash pilot of like a jet or something. And so he's like barely qualified to do this, but he's like the only person available. And so he goes off <laughs> and, you know, there's this whole like, journey into well, there's this There's only wormhole. so many people left. Yeah, I there's just only so many like people. Triflix. That, like <laughs> uh, the whole lore is like NASA never existed. It was all fake and propaganda. And so like the people of the earth don't even think there's a way to to like survive. And so this is like a small part of the government that's like thriving and trying to get off the planet to go into this wormhole. Anyway, you go through the wormhole and the wormhole is like really close to a black hole. Uh-huh. And so part of being close to a black hole, which is really pop- scientifically uh, accurate, is that the closer you get to it, the more time slows down. And so like they're going through like and hopping between these planets that are really close to a wormhole. And every time they're doing that, time is slowing down for them, but goes normal speed for everybody else. On Earth. And so he's like missing like 12 years of like his kid's life. Like every like five minutes he's on Earth or something like that. Hmm. And so like there's this like very emotional story about yes. like how like by the time they find the right planet or what's going to happen that like his daughter is like 90 years old. Oh, Okay. And then, like, right at the last moment, they find the way to, like, save humanity. And he's, How big like, is this ship? 
it's a tiny ship. It's only like a crew of like four people that oh, goes on it. Okay. It's not a big ship. And full so of this people. is like dire, it's, like the, the last hope. Like if this doesn't work, everybody's dead. Basically. Is Chris Brad in this one? <laughs> no, that's, uh, <laughs> what is that? That's a uh, passenger. That was not good. It was, if they recut it, it would have been really good. Like uh, I saw like a, an analysis of passenger of that like if it was, um, Almost. if it was recut from like her point of view. And like it was a slow reveal of what actually Dude, it'd be happened. A horror, I saw that. It yes. would be a freaking yeah, horror been, movie if that was been, the case. Yes. Well, that's basically what she's going through. Well, no, it's from the guy's perspective, it, and he was lonely, <laughs> and she yeah. was gorgeous, and he just had to have yeah, her. Yeah, but it was so it would be so much more compelling. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, Dahmer yeah. approved. All right. Okay. I'm going to turn off the picture in picture. Let us know if that was good for the segment. Oh, nice. Yeah, no, I, I forgot that you were working on getting that going. That's that's I awesome. I'm it was just, good. I'm a little preconceived. I, I don't know. It sounds like a pretentious oh. movie. <laughs> put picture in picture over your face. <laughs> no, man. There I, you go. I think you got to give these, uh, especially. I need to rewatch that too. Yeah. You should. You should check it out, man. No, it's a great movie. All Not these, Passenger. I'm just saying all these things. I these are movies that I would like expect you to like. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, now you have an opinion of it. Um. Yeah. And I have an opinion on the just think it's bad bio. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say without seeing it. <laughs> yeah, I try not to do that. I try not to. I get. I don't know. I was I, like, I, don't I, worry, I, darling. Like I was like, I don't want to make a preconceived like. You know what I mean? Opinion on this movie. <laughs> I want to see it. A lot of it was times, just yeah. like that happens. just like voting. You know, yeah. I don't want to not vote, and then <laughs> I don't want to be left out. Complain later. <laughs> I didn't want to be left out. <laughs> you didn't. That's why you. That's why we ran late today. <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of my favorite movies that I've watched are like I had no prior expectation, and I'm on an airplane and I have nothing else to do. I'm like, ah, whatever. That sounds cool. I yeah. can't read the description. I just see a thumbnail and then maybe an actor. And it's like Man Sent from Uncle, one of the best movies I've ever seen. Yeah. Just saw it on a plane on like an eight inch screen. Um, what was it? There was oh. another one. Uh, 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 Chasing Steve McQueen, I think. Another really good movie. <laughs> Uh, you watch movies when you're on airplanes. Yeah, I find that to be maybe the worst experience possible to watch. I was what else like, do I you watched do? it on an eight inch screen. Okay, so here's the thing. It's dumb. If you don't have time, or you just choose to do other things and watch movies at home, and then you're on a plane without Wi-Fi, it's like, what else do you do? It's like I don't watch them at home, so I'm on a plane. I have nothing else to do. The movie's free, and it's right in front of me. I'm gonna watch a movie. It's like I'm uh, the only alternative is I might go to sleep. Yeah, sleep. But this if it's like true. an hour and a half flight at like 6 p.m. on a Friday, it's like obviously I'm probably not going to sleep either. I'll just, I'll turn on a movie and give it a shot. Yeah. It depends on also the length of the flight. I'm not going to start a movie if I can't finish it. I don't like doing that. I get that. You know what makes That's it weird. hard for me to finish things on a computer? Uh, not being able to find my mouse. Oh. This is true. And if I, only I had seen like a tip. I tried watching though. a movie the other week and I couldn't find my my remote and that's like a mouse yeah yeah if only you could like if, make it really big well mouse a cursor a cursor. giant mouse cursor. giant remote giant cursor giant mouse cursor. you could you could find so many more things mm -hmm. <laughs> uh so this week's tip <laughs> was uh was, was a method that's built into mac os <laughs> which is found on apple computers <laughs> on their ecosystem on their software uh <laughs> so that you can find your mouse cursor uh, because they pinch, they pay attention to the little details. What a graceful segue! Yeah, it was awesome. I was sort of segueing into things that don't exist. I'm just glad you segued into it because I was getting ready to wrap I this up. I was trying really hard. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. This is there's it would be 100 percent uh with you guys listeners people uh there's not a lot to expand upon this uh if you haven't watched the video check out the video um mm -hmm. it's on our youtube and our instagram hopefully on our facebook yeah. um <laughs> we expanded hopefully. on it earlier um yeah there's there's again there's not much more to it it's one of those things where i think there's there's definitely instances especially uh when we're using the programs we are uh photoshop yeah. i think is the one i struggle with the most uh it is the blemish removal tool i use that a lot or content aware removal tool and that's just a very thin outline circle and if you put it over just the right stuff you you lose your cursor mm. and so all you do is you take either your mouse that's in your hand or your trackpad and you just kind of wiggle your 
your cursor. Right. Yeah. Pretend you're it, a toddler and just real frustrated. Yeah. Like yours, Matt. Ah. And it will <laughs> it will expand and grow on your screen, so you can find it. The more you shake it, the bigger it gets. Yes. It it, it is. That's my natural uh, way to find mouse cursor, like no, on a not com, uh, Mac. Because like, right. you just like, move it huh? around and you hope you see it. I think it's control <laughs> on PC. Like there's like uh, a you little You have to circle. enable it. Yes, I was going to say. That's such dumb. a great. That's so dumb. Great if you're, design yeah, choice. You can enable it on. It's like an yeah. equivalent find my mouse thing yes. on Windows where if you enable it, you mm. can press control and it like makes it like a radial circle. Kind of like, yeah. a, like yeah. the Doppler like map. A beacon. They, they <laughs> recently <laughs> updated it. So it actually makes it like a spotlight. So it oh. dims the entire screen except for where your mouse cursor That's is. That's lovely. I like yeah. that more than the That's better. the Mac thing almost. That's really oh, I like cool. the yeah. Mac thing. I like the Mac thing too. I like That's... being angry and shaking uh, my mouth. Ah. Apple knows best. So yeah, so if you're using either one of those, now you know. So yeah. there are options to find your mouse. If you've ever been frustrated, now you know. The vertical video is pretty, pretty funny. Right Cole laughed the video, audibly. Yes, the video turned out great. I don't, uh, yeah, it's very cute. It turned out really good. So I'm pumped. Uh, you guys will have to check it out I for don't sure. Think they, I don't think you saw the rest of it. I added a lot more to it after you left. <laughs> it's good. fantastic. I saw oh. the one coming in from the bottom of the video. I was the, like, okay. Many more. There you go. Yeah. So if you guys, uh, we're, we're going to put out, or sorry, Currently, if you go watch the video, try not to look at the other comments if they're there, but uh, watch the video and see if you can find all the different instances of the mouse popping, the cursor popping up in the video. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of a fun little challenge. Does and it end with like a wave of them like shrouding over you like a... No, no that'd be would funny. Have, that would have taken... Yeah. So I, uh, these these in, videos are not... Yeah. <laughs> in After Effects or in any actual... VFX software that would have been really easy to do even Apple Motion I just didn't throw it over there yeah, that's yeah. okay I was just curious like I'll hear a whole bunch of click noises yeah. and it just fills like, up the entire screen there's, with a, mice. there's a replicator <laughs> tool that would be, make that so much easier because you can yeah. like randomize the movements and have them all generally moving the same way that'd be funny we'll try that <laughs> another idea another day okay that's it guys I love it yeah that was uh, episode 7 we appreciate you guys listening and coming and checking everything out uh, I just want to appeal to everybody that's listening, you know, please do us the favor, go online, check out all of our profiles on Instagram and Facebook. And we put mm -hmm. some stuff on TikTok as well. Um, check out our handles on YouTube. We yeah. have them now. Yep. So go on YouTube, check everything out. We have old stuff. We have new stuff. Uh, there's a ton of fun content that we're putting out and we're really proud of it. So mm -hmm. it would mean a lot to us if you guys would help us out and subscribe to some channels and follow us. Um, yeah. Uh, Triflix LLC is our Instagram uh, profile name. Uh, that actually kind of works across the board. Uh, but we also have Triflix Films, Triflix Team, and Triflix Cast on YouTube. Uh, check out all those channels guys we appreciate you listening tell your friends tell your family again go check out our stuff we have a lot of fun stuff out there if you know of anybody that needs video or photo help um we would be happy to talk to somebody mm -hmm. and see if there's a way that we can aid in that uh we love what we do and we're going to continue to try to expand what we're doing and work with more people and yeah. we're really excited for next year so uh yeah again we just appreciate everybody who's who's helped us to get this far and you know go tell some more people so we can do some more things yeah, yeah. if you know anybody that would like to come on the podcast uh go ahead and throw us a dm or uh -huh. uh, contact at triflix.com you can send us an email uh or go to the website you can also contact us through there so check it out check us out yeah. Thank you again to our sponsors, Coffeehouse 5 and Passion for Acting Theater Company. In the comments below, what's a movie you've never seen? Yeah. Well, I like it. 